What's up, everyone? Welcome back uh, to the Neutral Zone Rewind. This will be episode 12. Um, your host, Terrence Checkit. I'm uh, Rylan Close. All right. So uh, we had three tournaments this past weekend. Um, Highland Heights Havoc, um, ECDC, East Coast Dodgeball Cup, and uh, the Grand Valley Gauntlet. Uh, yeah, so starting us off, uh, we'll go with the Highland Heights Havoc. Um, we had Illinois beating uh, University of Kentucky by 7-2. to two. Uh, Northern Kentucky beating uh, UK as well by a score of 9-2. to two. And uh, weirdly enough, in I believe the second tie in NCDA history, uh, Illinois and Northern Kentucky were not able to finish their game. Uh, they finished with a score of 2-2 two to two before the uh, staff ended up kicking them out. Uh, I feel like that game is uh, is definitely due for uh, a Nationals rematch to kind of see who, uh, you know, finally takes that one home. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. Yeah, other than that, uh, props to UK for coming out to their first uh, tournament of the year. Uh, obviously, you know, they're a little bit behind in terms of experience right now, but it's cool to see them finally coming out. Hopefully we also see them at Nationals. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes for a new group of guys, the best thing you can do is just get as many as you can to one tournament. And hopefully that'll spark interest or whatever. But yeah, nice tournament uh, hosted by NKU. Um, yeah, good to see UK out there and definitely going to need a rematch between uh, Illinois and uh, NKU. Uh, yeah. So moving into um, the Grand Valley Gauntlet, um, we had uh, three of the top five teams in the country uh, come out to uh, Grand Rapids. Um, some of the scores were uh, MSU 9 over CMU 0, Grand Valley 4 over B at BGSU 2, um, youth, uh, UC 3 over GVSU 2, MSU 5 over UC 2, BG 4 over CMU 3 in a close one, uh, GVSU 7 over CMU 0, and then uh, probably the match of the day, BGSU beating UC in overtime, three to two. Uh, and then in uh, the first MDC final rematch between MSU and GV, and MSU gets the better of them, four to one. So uh, a lot of storylines at the Grand Valley Gauntlet. Um, first, we can start off with uh, CMU, probably their best showing to date. I mean, when you can say that you only lost to a team by one point who went on to beat Cincinnati on the same day, that's uh, progress for sure. Um, not the results they were looking for against MSU and GV, but um, baby steps. Yeah, the top, top end of that region is brutal, obviously. It's it's uh, definitely trial by fire, but they gave BG a really good showing. Uh, overall, super weird tournament in terms of results. Uh, you know, BG struggling to put away uh, CMU and then immediately the game later after that uh, beating Cincinnati in overtime is wild. Uh, props Crazy. to them. They played their hearts out. Um, other than that, yeah, GV also seems to be in kind of a little bit of trouble this season. Uh, I believe the last time that they missed the NCDA championship game was back in 2012. Um, and they're at risk of breaking that streak. Uh, they have yet to beat a top five team this season since I believe their first tournament of the year when they beat MSU. Mm -hmm. um, they're still a good team. They're still beating solid teams. We saw them, you know, do pretty decent. They beat Miami at war, but you know, they're dropping games to Akron. They're dropping games to UC. They, they don't look to be in the top form that we usually expect from them. Yeah. Agreed. But, um, I mean, we all know Grand Valley is a different different animal when it comes to day two of nationals, so never count them out. Um, and then I definitely want to shout out MSU. They had a great day um, beating UC and GV pretty convincingly um, to kind of reassert themselves at the top of the power rankings. Uh, we'll see when those come out later this week, but uh, definitely a good day from them. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so, yeah, moving on to uh, East Coast Dodgeball Cup. Uh, yeah, uh, for scores for that, we've got uh, JMU beating UVA 6-1. to one. We have Penn State over Maryland 4-2. Uh, to two. JMU over Maryland 5 to nothing. Uh, Penn State over UVA 3-2. to two. UVA beating UMD 3-2 uh, to two in overtime. And in the 
essentially championship game, we had JMU beating Penn State two to one uh, and coming out on top and winning the first ever inaugural uh, East Coast Dodgeball Cup. Yeah, congrats to the Dukes. A um, lot of good matches at this tournament. Um, I got to say, apart from the JMU game, just looking back on their other previous tournaments this year, UVA loves to play close games. They, um, yeah, they kind of play to their competition very often. Uh, you can see um, only losing to PSU by one and then taking UMD to overtime. Those are two teams that you wouldn't really expect to get similar results from. But yeah, they're a really solid team. They continue to get, continue to get better. Um, and then I'd say that, yeah, the main storyline on the day was JMU and PSU. Uh, tiny bit of controversy in that game. Um, but yeah, good uh, OT game mixed in there. UMD and UVA, that's always a good rivalry. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely cool to see UVA... Uh you know, kind of building their way back up in that region. Uh, Maryland, you know, kicked them around earlier in the year, but now later they're starting to take some of these games from them. Um, not quite at the level of a Penn State or a JMU just yet, but uh, they're definitely making some progress in that region. They, they have a very slow burner style of play that is a, a lot different from the way some other squads play, and it's very interesting to see them develop it more. Yeah, I agree. They're definitely not an East Coast style dodgeball team. Um, so yeah, that's what we got for this weekend. Um, coming up this, uh, next weekend down in Miami, we have, uh, women's no sting nationals. So there's going to be a lot of great dodgeball to watch on Saturday, uh, starts off with an all-star game and a rookie game. Uh, so a couple feature matches there, and then, um, they'll get right into round Robin with, uh, I think there's going to be eight teams, including the mixed teams, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so the uh, the way it works is I believe there's uh, there's four uh, official school teams that are in the championship division, essentially, and then there's um, the B teams and mixed squads that are in the non-championship division, and each of those like divisions essentially will play around Robin with each other, and then there will be two separate championship brackets, one for the like teams that have a full women's squad um, that are official, and then one for the mixed teams and B teams to determine you know, who wins out of them. So a lot of exciting female players coming in from all around the country. It's going to be really fun to watch ton of good dodgeball. I highly encourage anyone who's a fan of dodgeball and who doesn't really watch a lot of no sting to come check it out. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I personally will be there and I'm excited to see how it goes. Yeah. Same. I'll also be there and yeah, just tune in. If you can't be there, it'll be a great day all around. Um, and then, yeah, just a reminder, those four teams that are eligible to win the No Sting Nationals are Akron, CSU, MSU, and UIUC. So good luck to them. Uh, we'll see who takes home the, uh, the trophy this weekend. And then um, we are less than two weeks away from Pinch Nationals at OSU. Um, definitely be on the lookout for a Nationals uh, preview podcast sometime next week. Um, but yeah, got a lot of great content coming in and, um, yeah, that's, that's all we got for this episode. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in.